Hi, I'm Shanaz. In this lecture, we are going to prove the five lemma. And this lemma states that suppose so it states that uh, if we have a commutator diagram with exact rows like this, so consider the commutator diagram with exact rows um, this diagram is given like this so we have R modules A B C D E and this is exact sequence this is the map F this is G this is H and suppose this is the map P and we have another exact sequence mm, from A prime to B prime C prime D prime and finally E prime and the map is F prime G prime H prime and P prime and we have a homomorphism between these two exact sequences so this is the map say alpha this is map beta this is gamma this is theta and this is suppose say map delta now these maps are all homomorphisms so it states that if we have a commutator di diagram like this with these rows given to be exact uh, such that uh, then if this first homomorphism alpha is surjective and this delta is injective and this beta and theta are given to be isomorphisms and beta and theta are isomorphisms and then this gamma is also a also an isomorphism now let us prove this now to prove this theorem we are going to use the four theorem now we will use four theorem on these uh, three uh, squares which are which are on the right so if we consider mm, the commutator diagram so consider the commutator diagram so let us consider mm, the the right three squares ie uh, the diagram B C D E B C D E so this is map G this is H this is P this is G prime this is H prime and this is P prime sorry these are the modules b prime c prime and e prime and this is beta this is gamma this is theta and this is 
delta now if we look at this uh, this diagram so it uh, satisfies the hypothesis of the first uh, item of four theorem the four theorem ie so observe that beta is given to be subjective beta is subjective comma this uh, theta is an isomorphism and hence surjective and this delta is injective then this is the hypothesis of the first item of the four theorem so if this is true then this gamma has to be a subject to homomorphism then by in the four theorem so this actually follows from the first item of the four theorem then by the four theorem this gamma is surjective now to prove uh, injectivity of this gamma we are going to consider the first uh, three squares of this uh, diagram now consider the diagram which is commutative So we are going to consider this diagram uh, with modules A, B, C, D, A, B, C and D. These are the um, homomorphisms G, sorry, this is the homomorphism F this is G this is H this is F prime this is G prime and this is H prime these are the modules A prime B prime C prime and D prime and these are the homomorphisms alpha beta gamma and delta so Note that this alpha is surjective. Note that alpha is surjective. This beta is this beta and mm, this is not delta, this is actually theta here. Note that this alpha is surjective and beta and theta are isomorphisms and hence injective. So then this diagram satisfies the hypothesis of the second item of the four theorem so this forces this uh, gamma to be injective so hence by the four theorem gamma is an injective homomorphism in the first part we proved that this gamma is subjective and here we proved this gamma is injective mm, that is 
gamma is an isomorphism now let us move back uh, to the free modules so in previous lectures we have introduced the notion of uh, free modules now we are going to prove the freeness property of uh, free modules but before that let us uh, recall what do we mean by a free module so first of all uh, we call um, suppose m is an r module then we call m to be cyclic if m is generated by an element x where this x is an element of m uh, in other words we can write this m as r x now if this is the case then m is said to be cyclic now this m is called a free cyclic module if uh, so if annihilator of this x is 0 I mean 0 is the only element uh, in the ring R which uh, annihilates this x then this module M is called a free cyclic module so then M is called free cyclic module now we are done with this free cyclic modules now let us recall what do we mean by a free module so we call so this is the definition which we have introduced earlier so a module m is said to be uh, cyclic, uh, sorry free module if m is actually uh, direct sum of m alphas where each uh, where each m alpha is free cyclic module so if this is the case then m is called a free module now since each m alpha is cyclic then this m alpha is generated by this x alpha where this x alpha is an element in m such that uh, this annihilator of x alpha is 0 now if this is the case that means this uh, m this is generated by these uh, x alphas where this uh, this is actually direct sum of these x alphas where this uh, alpha lies in some index set so in that case if we can look at this set x alpha where uh, alpha is in some index then uh, index set then this set is said to be the basis of this module m so this is called basis of m now we are going to prove the freeness property of uh, three uh, sorry the universal property of free modules so let us write this down here so this is called universal property universal property of uh, free modules So let us consider a free R module M. So let F be a free R module M. Um, with basis B, since each free module has a basis. So B is the basis of M. Now suppose 
for any R modul M and every function so then for any R module so this is not here so F is a free R module then for any R module M and any function so we have a function say gamma from the basis b of f into m so we can uh, extend this gamma to a unihomorphism so there exists a unique uh, R module homomorphism R module homomorphism say phi from F into M such that this phi and gamma they agree on B i.e. such that phi of b is gamma of b for all b in b now what we have to prove sup suppose this is our uh, basis b this is module free module f so this is r module f and b is it is basis so here we have this map this inclusion map i so this is the inclusion map and from this basis B we have a function uh, say gamma from B into the R module M so if is if this is the case then we can extend this gamma from B to F I mean this gamma can be extended uniquely into a uh, homomorphism say phi from f to m I mean this phi is an extension of this gamma now here gamma is uh, an arbitrary function and this phi is a homomorphism so this is unique now let us prove this so since this b is um, the basis of uh, over uh, R module um, F. So let B be this set B I, where this I is in some index set. So let us consider any element in F. So let uh, say V be an element of F. Then by definition of basis of a free module, this V can be uniquely expressed as uh, since this is the case, so this F is actually like this. So it is direct sum of these B i's. Now if this is the case, then we can be uniquely. Now this uniqueness comes from this direct sum. So this can be uniquely uh, expressed as this V is sum of these R I B I where this sum is over I where R I is in R Now, since 
gamma is a map from basis B into M so this is just a map so we can define this phi as we can define phi from F to M as so phi of V now this phi of V can be expressed as so this is same as phi of this V is sum of R I B I where this sum is over I so this is same as sigma I sigma run is sum run is over I R I phi of B I because phi is the modular homomorphism so this is same as sigma i r i now since phi and gamma they agree on b so we can replace this phi as gamma of b i so this makes uh, this phi uh, a well defined map so this shows that uh, phi is linear uh, I mean this phi is mm, a well defined map now to prove this uniqueness mm, to prove so one can easily prove phi is linear so if we take phi of v plus b v plus w then this is same as uh, so this v has an expression like this and this w has an expression like this so we can write this phi of v plus w as phi of suppose some r i b i plus uh, r i prime uh, b i then using uh, the fact that phi is homomorphism we can prove phi is linear now, so to prove phi is linear is easy and to prove phi is unique so let psi from f to m be uh, other such homomorphism other such homomorphism then this psi and gamma will agree on B then the psi of B is same as gamma of B but this gamma of B is same as because psi uh, because gamma and phi they also agree on B for all B in B now if two linear maps agree on the basis they must be equal this shows all right let us write so, since any two linear maps I mean R linear maps are linear maps which agree on a basis set on same basis set on same basis on same basis so they must be equal therefore this psi is same as phi this proves or claim